Hey, I'm Scott from tool-hunter.com. It is a nasty November day in North Carolina. It's uh, the first weekend since the time change took place last weekend, so it's, it's a lot darker outside than I'm used to at this time of day. It's also raining outside, and I thought I've got to get out of the house, get over to the shop and uh, play around a little bit. And one of the things I've wanted to share with you for a while now is the evolution of a miter gauge that I think is one of the best miter gauges ever offered as standard equipment on a power tool. And that is a miter gauge that was created by Shopsmith. Now, this one I have here on the end is uh, the very first miter gauge of its kind, which was introduced around the mid-50s. It was invented by Hans Goldschmidt, the gentleman who created the Shopsmith line of power tools. Now, a couple things about this miter gauge that, that make it stand out. Uh, first off, it has a, a very large protractor, which is the part that we use to get the angle just right when mitering or making cross cuts. And part of the beauty of this particular design is there's a plunger here that engages a set screw. The set screw is accessed through the sides of the protractor uh, with a flathead screwdriver. Now, before this, all miter gauges had a little, little flip stop that would uh, index against a machine screw. And um, the, the flip stop itself was uh, often part of the contributor to, uh, to errors in mitering. Um, also, the lock knob on here is drilled through where the uh, shopsmith owner can use their 532nd Allen wrench, or as we call this, the shopsmith toolbox, to get a little extra grip on that knob and get the, the angles locked in just right. Another innovation were these um, U-shaped channels that allow you to have a wooden auxiliary fence that will drop into place and tighten with, well, I use quarter 20 uh, carriage bolts and I'll use a knurled knob or a wing nut. Before this, all miter gauges had a hole that went through each side and you would run a wood screw through into a wooden block and it worked just fine but with this design you could quickly and easily interchange those uh, those auxiliary fences <laughs> kind of ignoring the most obvious feature the fact that it has a safety grip this was truly innovative and what it did is it kept your hand away from the blade and also multiplied your strength I get more downward pressure and inward pressure when pulling this handle or this pistol grip than I do holding with my bare fingers. Now, a couple other things. On the bottom of this miter gauge, there's a couple nylon glides. You set this into the miter slot, and through the top, you can adjust those glides down till the miter gauge protractor is just levitating over the surface of your table saw, giving you almost no uh, friction as you're making your cuts. And then finally, uh, we have a set screw, which is tapered, that's going into a threaded hole in the middle of a slot. Now that's used for a number of things. We can use that to eliminate side-to-side -side play or slop in the miter slot, but also with Shopsmith there are times where my miter gauge becomes a bit of a fixture. I can tighten that down on the table and use that as an indexing point. I use it a lot on my drill press, actually. All right, finally, the uh, height adjustment here for my clamp is made by turning these knurled knobs on that threaded rod and then bringing them into place. So, um, not the most convenient adjustment, but it gets you there. Fast forward from the 1950s into the 1980s, and uh, Shopsmith had the honor of uh, having their product knocked off in Taiwan. It was sold under a bunch of names. You can find out more on my blog at tool-hunter.com, and you can see some of those products. And one of the things they knocked off was the miter gauge. Now, they got in trouble, though, because some of them tried to knock off the current version of the Shopsmith miter gauge. And in the mid-80s, mid Shopsmith added a, a, really a, a really nice innovation. And that is their hold-down clamp now adjusts very quickly through the use of this little uh, knob right there. Another thing that happened in the, in the 1980s is they came out with a larger version of the Mark V called the 510. Now, prior to this, the shaper fence that you would add to this machine for shaping would clamp on to the two ends of the table saw. Um, the problem was, as the saw got bigger, or the table got bigger, 
It didn't make sense to make an unwieldy uh, large shaper fence, so instead they made the base of that smaller and drilled holes into the tabletop that you bolted that fence in place. Well, lo and behold, when you tilted your protractor to a couple angles, those nylon glides that helped us so much on the table saw would drop into those holes. So Shopsmith came up with a, an interesting solution. They changed the casting on the protractor and instead of using small bullet-shaped nylon glides, they went to these large hex bolts and the head of that bolt, or the face of the bolt, now runs across the table, eliminating the problem of those dropping in. Now, imagine my surprise the other day when I'm walking through a woodworking store and I saw this miter gauge. Now this miter gauge is a fairly decent uh, knockoff of the Shopsmith miter gauge. And so it stopped me in my tracks, I had to take a look, and some of the obvious things jumped out at me right away. There is no slot, there's no tapered screw, so I can't make any, uh, I can't lock this in the miter slot. It's also a three-quarter inch by three-eighths thick bar, so this is not going to fit any of my Shopsmith tools. However, it will fit Delta, Craftsman, many, many others. Um, also notice that the, uh, the plunger, though similar to the protractor adjustment on the Shopsmith tools, is not exactly the same. Instead of using those um, uh, set screw type screws, they've got a machine screw and a nut, a lock nut, just like the miter gauge um, on my Powermatic 66, for example, the exact same type of stops. The, uh, the steel knob is missing. This one has a plastic knob. But I thought it was kind of cool because, you know, it did include this stop rod. This is something that was an accessory on Shopsmith miter gauge, still is to this day, and that was included with the miter gauge. Well, the more I played with it, the, the less impressed I was, partially because they use a much thinner casting. This is aluminum, and uh, I don't have any glides on this, so it wants to grind across my table saw. And I have to take this stop rod and run it completely through the protractor. Let me see if I can do this here. No, oh, I have to back off my bolts to be able to do this. Well, anyway, if I don't drive it all the way through, you can see what happens when I tighten it down. That bar is sticking out from the bottom of the miter gauge. Um, so, anyway, this is the, uh, the, the Woodstock International. It's got the threaded rods again, like the original 1950s Shopsmith miter gauge. Uh, Woodstock International is the company or sister company of Grizzly Power Tools. Then I found this miter gauge. Thought I'd go ahead and complete my obsession. <laughs> I bought this one online. It was av available on eBay. Um, a little more faithful to the current model of the Shopsmith miter gauge in that they, they, they did knock off, sort of, that quick clamp. Um, one of my problems with this, though, is that bolt is pressing against a, an aluminum casting where this one is, a, a, I believe it's a powdered steel. Uh, so, in the long run, that concerns me a little bit. But everything else about this is pretty faithful to the original Shopsmith miter gauge. It has the nylon glides. It has the, uh, the stop, uh, miter stop rod, and that is locked in place through the miter gauge and that, uh, that rod is going through the center of the casting. There is no, uh, no washer for T-slot, no expansion uh, here, so I can't lock it in place. And of all the miter gauges I've played with, this one's got the roughest finish, so you might have to polish that up a little bit. And last but not least, I wanted to show you the latest evolution of the Shopsmith miter gauge. This is a miter gauge that is manufactured by Inca, or the Taylor Design Group. You all know, I'm sorry, Incra. You all know the um, Incra gauge, Incra fences for, uh, for table saws and for routers. Well, this is their um, Miter V120, but it's been modified by Shopsmith to uh, fit on a Mark V. It's got the Shopsmith bar, it's got uh, a T-slot washer. It's got these really cool adjustable glides that help to fit the, uh, the miter slot. You buy this like this from Shopsmith. They sell it exclusively. You take your pistol grip, um, your hold down clamp, off of your, your pistol grip before you assemble this and transfer that over. 
And there we go. With all the accuracy of the Incra miter gauge that maybe you've heard about. But I now have the same pistol grip and the ability to guide this through my saw very accurately. The bottom of this face, the whole face, is a non-slip gliding surface. And the face of this is a bit low, and I've also sacrificed those through slots. So I'm going to have to play with this some more to see how much I like that feature. But otherwise, I am so happy to have a, a, a miter gauge that has very accurate graduations and uh, incorporates the pistol grip. Available exclusively through ShopSmith if you have a non-ShopSmith machine. Uh, you can buy an, an Incra miter gauge through uh, the Taylor Design Group and other resellers, but it's not going to have the pistol grip. And again, these fellows are available on eBay. I'll put some notes in the description. Also, uh, I'll write something up and stick it over at tool-hunter.com. You might want to click on the ShopSmith blog link on the left-hand side. That'll take you to my other blog where I've written a lot about ShopSmith tools. Anyway, I think that's all I want to tell you today, and uh, see you again soon.